Ears and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. It uh, rolls on till uh, the, uh, the, uh, until um, the cock crows at uh, midnight. Does the cock crow at midnight? No, the cock does not crow at midnight. My cock doesn't crow at midnight. It hardly ever crows at all anymore, but that's sage. Okay, anyway. Uh, so here we are, and I have not, I, I'm stuck with uh, 25 minutes here. Uh, I just may go to the phones. What the hell? I, I don't know if anybody will call me this early. But what happens is, is that I, I have to kill 25 minutes, and usually I kill it with an interview. But I've run all, out of all my interviews for this week. And then tomorrow night, girlfriend's maybe going to be on, but she probably won't. So what's going to happen then? Anyway, uh, so I don't, you know, I have the, the, this whole thing about I don't know what to talk about and how long to talk about it. And lately I've been, I've had this tiredness, uh, which uh, coffee doesn't seem to solve, okay? And uh, th then again, I talk to everybody lately, and they're all feeling tired. And I, I go, why are you so tired? And we, I figure it's the pollen. I figure that it's allergies because my eyes are usually tearing. Today, I wasn't as tired as I usually am, but I wasn't tearing as much, okay? So who knows? Uh, you know, uh, either that or I'm dying of some horrible disease, you know, because I'm always figuring that's the case. It's also, you know, it, what happens with me lately is... Uh, I am, I, and I, I make no bones about this. I, I don't try to hide the fact that I am 79 years old. And um, today I had somebody come over to my house who, who said, how old are you? I, he says, maybe I'm older than you are. And I said, how old are you? And he said, 73. And I said, you're a kid, you know. And he says, uh, gee, how come you look so good? I said, are you kidding me? If this is looking good, I mean, I, I used to be that I could win over women, and now I scare little children, okay? Uh, so anyway, you know, you look in the mirror. What happens is, is when you're younger, you look in the mirror, and you see this child. And as you grow up, you keep seeing the same child in the mirror. And at some point in your life, and I can't tell you when it happens, you look in the mirror one day and say, what the fuck? fuck happened to me right like i often wondered do you ever see um jackie coogan you know who i'm talking about when i talk about jackie coogan let me apprise you of jackie coogan uh jackie coogan was in silent films considered to be the cutest little boy alive all right he did a movie with charlie chaplin called the kid and it was a terrific film, and one of Charlie Chaplin's greatest films. And he played the kid in Charlie Chaplin's The Kid. And he was adorable. And when the police were taking him away from Charlie, who was his guardian, and was looking out for him, he's crying and going, Daddy, Daddy, come, please, you know. And you just, your heart goes out to this little kid who is the cutest little kid you've ever seen in your life. Go 30 years into the future, maybe 40, okay? Where does Jackie Coogan show up? I'll tell you, you've seen him, okay? And you go, well, where have I seen him before? Do you remember the Adams Family? You remember Cousin It? Uh, wasn't it? No, no, he didn't play It. He played, oh, what was the name of the character? Hold on a second. I'm going to go look this up. I can't stand myself now. I, I suddenly, I thought he was Cousin It, but he really wasn't Cousin It. Uh, he was, let's see, Adam's family. Mm-hmm. Adam's uh, family. Uh, it's, it's two, is it two Ds with Adam's? 
Uh, let me see here. Mm -hmm. Adams, oops, Adams family. I'm really blown this whole thing by can't by not being able to remember who he was. Uh, let's see here. Adams family reunion. Adams family, uh, the TV show. Where is it? Uh, there, it's not there. It's not there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'll, I'll have it for you in a moment. He played. Um, um, uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Son of a bitch. Well, he's not here. This is ridiculous. He should be right here. That's got to be. That's not the right uh, Adams family. And yet it's the one with John Aston. Uh, fuck it. IMDb is pissing me off tonight. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I'll put in Jackie Coogan. Because got, I've got to give you this reference because if I don't have it, you, you don't understand what I'm saying about growing old. Uh, Jackie Coogan. Okay, there we go. Oh, come on. Fuck you. Plugging movies on me. There we go. All right. Uh, cute little kid. Wonderful cute little kid. Um... Flying High, heck, only actor, 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 1977. Uh, play, come on, Adam's family. There we go. He played, okay, Uncle Fester. All right. Now, you remember Uncle Fester? Yeah. That was the cutest, at one time, the cutest boy in the world turned into one of the ugliest men you've ever seen. And you say to yourself, what, and I often used to say, what day? Did Jackie Coogan look in the mirror and go, what the fuck happened to me? And, you know, right now I'm looking at myself on camera, and I go, what the fuck happened to me? Uh, because, you know, I mean, I wasn't, I always considered myself kind of not handsome or even sexy, but I was at least passable, you know, and, and now I look at this and I go, you know, I've, I've actually thought about not showing myself on this program. Uh, and uh, the best way to do that would, of course, be to not do the video, right? But I, I haven't done that. So anyway, you wake up one day and you go, what the fuck happened to me? And I look in the mirror here or the, the lens here and I go, what the fuck ever happened? What the fuck happened to me? So anyway. So where was I going with that, with the what the fuck happened to me? Oh, so, you know, as you get older, you just suddenly realize, you know, then I get aches and pains and things like that, and you go, geez, you know, is this, is this the end of life? And this is, you know, I've, I've always been an atheist, and, and here's the reason why. There are several reasons why I am an atheist. Uh, reason number one is that if there were a God and he created us, uh, he would be the perfect architect. Would we all agree with that, God? He wouldn't make mistakes like in creating the human body, right? Uh, think again. Here, I have a thing called a prostate. Every man has a prostate. To you older men, you know what I'm talking about. To you younger men, hold on, it's going to happen to you, okay? In which... The prostate is this donut-shaped thing, right? And it does, you know what it, it does? It, it gives the fluid that the sperm, which comes from the testicles, floats in. It's, or as some guys would call a pre-cum, okay? Anyway, it's a donut, okay? And now what goes, what, why is it a donut? Well, I can't figure out why it's a donut. I mean, you could invent a prostate that does that pre-cum fluid without having to be a donut. So what happens with this donut? Well, where's your urethra? That's the tube that your urine flows through. Well, it goes right through the middle of the prostate. Okay? Now, as you get older, the prostate gets enlarged and starts squeezing on the urethra. Now I've explained to you why old men go to the bathroom so often. And if I weren't on medicine right now, I could not go through this two-hour program without going and taking a pee at least twice, okay? But 
since I'm on the medicine, I can go through the whole show pretty much. And sometimes I feel I have to go, but, you know. But if there was a God and he made the human body, would he have made such a blatant error? And if he had made a blatant error, at some time, wouldn't he say, well, you know something? I think I'll have to fix this. Uh, and, and somehow through uh, evolution would move the prostate out of the way and let the urethra just go through, okay? But uh, that's the one, that's the reason, the first re time I said I'm an atheist is because I said if there was a God, that wouldn't happen. You can also go if there was a God, uh, why would there be so much suffering in the world? Uh, uh, religious people have an answer for that, and it's some kind of bullshit answer about, well, you know, God isn't here to solve your problems, you know. Well, then why, why do they have, why, why would God let little kids die of cancer? Well, that was all in God's plan. What, is God, God's plan was to get even with us? No. So that was another reason I became an atheist. Uh, the other reason I became an atheist is because of uh, this whole aging thing. That if there was a God, would he have not made things better as you got older, not worse. I mean, I'm getting, I, I have a great fear of death. I've mentioned this on any number of occasions on this program. I have a great fear of death, but, okay, having that great fear of death, uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, having a great fear of death, the one thing that uh, 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 is, is kind of becoming easier is the concept of dying. And you know why? Because I got so many aches and pains and little things that are bothering me and everything is starting to go. The feet are numb and the, uh, the prostate may have a little cancer in there and uh, uh, my, my tooth here had to be pulled so now I have to go get another implant. Uh, so I'm, I have a gaping hole in my mouth that only makes me eligible to be a Trump voter. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, all these little things start happening. I got a hemorrhoid the other day that I never had before. Oh, an external one, too, the kind that are painful. Uh, I know I'm, I'm, it's more, not, more than you need to know, so let me not go that far. Okay? So um, it, it gets, uh, it, 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 I then have lack of a faith of a God. Now, people say to me, well, you don't believe in God, but what if you die? And all of a sudden, you go up to heaven and you find out there was one. And I said, well, if there's a God and he's as you report that God to be, um, he probably will forgive me. Right? I mean, if he's an all-forgiving God, he will forgive me for not believing in him. In fact, he might say to me, yeah, I know, Alex, yeah. I wouldn't believe in me either. You know, there's a, the whole myth they put behind me is just bigger than anybody can believe. And the fact that you didn't uh, doesn't matter. Come on in. We'll get to know each other. And I'll show you my mercy. All right? So that, that's what I'm counting on if I should get to that, that higher state, you know. But somehow I have this feeling that when I die, I'm just going to be dead. So now what happens as I'm growing older is all these people I know are dying. You know, I hear, hear about this one, and I hear about that one, and I hear about, uh, uh, you know, this person. Oh, did you hear so-and-so just died? And I go, oh, my God, not another person. I mean, we had a person here on the Citizen Panel, John Rockwell, die a couple of months ago, all right? Is that right? No. If there were a God, he'd still be here because he was a sweet, wonderful guy. Okay. So anyway, um, tonight I get the news again of somebody else that I knew uh, well at one point, and then later on over the years, not not much at all, uh, who died. He died at seventy-seven, and you know him. You know him. He went by the name of Doctor John. Uh, we knew him personally as Mac Rebinac. Uh, and he was the guy who turned me on to music which has literally obsessed me through all of my life. And that was Cajun music. That was the Creole music of, uh, of the South. And I'll tell you how it happened. 
I had Dr. John on with me at the WPLJ, okay, when I was doing the overnight show. And uh, he came on the show to promote an album or whatever. And in those days, what Dr. John did, I, I don't know if you remember this, but he was Dr. John the Night Tripper. And they said he was like the Gree Gree Man. And he did all this kind of mysterious stuff, and it was kind of voodoo stuff and so on. And I just thought it was kind of like, you know, one of these acts that was just kind of, you know, uh, gimmicky. Uh, and then as I'm interviewing him on the show, he, he says, you know, uh, I really love, you know, I, I, I learned how my music from a guy by the name of uh, Professor Longhair down in New Orleans who played uh, um, this uh, Zydeco Cajun music whatever you want to call it. He said he taught me how to play piano. And I had never heard of Professor Longhair. Shortly after that, I went and made myself aware of Professor Longhair, and he became so much of a uh, 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 obsession with me. He, his Rum and Coke became my theme song on radio for years in San Francisco. Uh, but John said to me, uh, Mac, said to me, uh, I noticed in the other studio you have a piano, because we had uh, these studios at PLJ, these little studios, and then in the middle was this big, huge studio that could be used for any number of things, and many times it was used for some reason or another to play music in. And they had a piano, and I said, well, sure, and we turned on the mics in there, and he went in, and he started playing this music. It was his, the music he had learned how to play in New Orleans. And I really was never, uh, I mean, I had lived in Houston, Texas, and I knew about what we called Cajun music, but I never became instilled in the, in the, in the whole history of it and the loveliness of the music that it was until that night when John Mac Rebenack sat down at the piano guy I didn't know even played the piano and started playing this magical music and I it was one of the most memorable nights of my life was to see him and he sat there for maybe an hour playing various things and explaining stuff about the music of, of New Orleans and this was the Dr. John that I think you probably in later years got to know because he started playing that music and um I got, he, he was, uh, at that time, when I first met him, uh, a heroin addict. Now, he was a functioning heroin addict. You know, there are certain people who do uh, heroin so much that they are able to function on it. So he could go and play a concert and be high as a kite on heroin. Now, in later years, he quit heroin. In fact, from what I understand, something happened to him that happens to a lot of heroin addicts that doesn't get reported that much, and that is he did what they call matured out of it. In other words, one day you wake up, right, and you decide that you don't want it anymore, and you just don't do it any longer, and that's what happened with, with Mac. But uh, he was a heroin addict. And we would go to parties at hotels that he would hold. He would hold like a gathering after a show or something like that. And we would go up there, and on the table was this mummified human head. Yeah. And if you ever went to one of his concerts and you looked carefully at the top of the piano, there was this mummified human head. So finally, one day I asked him about it. In fact, I asked him about it on the air in an interview, and I said, you know, I've been to your parties and I've been to your concerts, and there's this human head that you're dragging around, and, you know, he says, yeah. And he had some name for him. I can't remember what the name was for him. And I said, why are you doing that? And he said, well, you know, he says, I, I saw he did, was talking in his, his Cajun way of talking. He said, I... Uh, I came across this head in a, in, a, in, a, in a store down in New Orleans, in a voodoo-type store, and uh, I decided to buy it. And now I take him everywhere I go because I travel the whole world. I said, 
And, and this guy, we think, was a, had been a slave or had at least been a very poor black guy. He said, and uh, I decided that I was going to take him with me wherever I went. And he said, I go to Italy, I take the head with me. I go to San Francisco, I take the head with me. At every concert I play, the head is on the piano. He said, this guy in death has had a better life and seen more things than he ever saw in life, and uh, in death. And I said, I always thought that was amazing. And uh, sure enough, you go to a party, there was the there was the head, you know. I mean, there was also Mac uh, shooting up. Uh, he really had quite a habit going. Uh, you would go into the bathroom, there was blood on the walls. Uh, and I'm not saying anything out of school because he 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 one day cleaned up and um, had what I considered a spectacular career and every piece of music he ever did, I truly, truly enjoyed because it was also filtered through my historical uh, preference, uh, my historical reference rather, uh, of, of, of uh, knowing him and, and um, knowing uh, the history behind the music that he was doing and how much he loved it. So uh, I, uh, I just, you know, I, 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 I could say I'm going to miss him, but I haven't seen Mac, what, maybe 20, 25 years. He did one of our Breakfast with Bennett's in San Francisco. And again, uh, he played the music and was just, you know, he just was terrific. He, 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 was, he was a master musician. And uh, the likes of him will not be seen that often, Okay. There are a lot of guys still coming out of New Orleans who'll tell you that Mac was probably the best, you know. And um, I thank him for a lifelong love of, uh, of, of Professor Longhair, who I would love to play here for you, but unfortunately, if I play it, I will then get dinged by YouTube, and Facebook may not even play the show, and uh, I would have to explain that it would be fair use, but you can't, they, they, have you prove that after the fact? Uh, so I wish I could play some Professor Long here because he's wonderful. But why don't you do this? Just go online. I'm sure you can steal it from somewhere. Okay? And if you don't want to steal it, buy it. Anyway, I hope I haven't been too far out of sync tonight. Uh, I, I really, uh, uh, really, I, I think it's, I'm pretty much in sync. If I'm not, ah, fuck it, you know. I've been trying too hard here to make things perfect. I just hope they are acceptable. All right? Let me open up the Skype lines. Gee, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I found a new uh, app, by the way, but I, um, I decided not to use it tonight uh, because um, there is a problem with it. Uh, well, I don't know if it'll work or not work. Let me see if I can get it to work. This is an app that takes what's ever on my, on my phone. Okay, let's see if it'll do it. I, I don't know if it'll do it. Yeah, there, there it's doing it. Okay, all right, all right. Let me see here. Let me try this, all right? Boom. See that? I'm using my iPhone as a camera. Is that incredible? I just thought I'd uh, do that for you so you could see. And then I could turn it around, and then you could get a real, oh, wait a minute, let me get, get a really ugly look at my face, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, you can see the room we do the show in here. Yeah. Uh, that's the noisy air conditioner, and uh, there we go, okay. Anyway, I just thought I would, uh, I would do that. And uh, uh, let me turn it off here. Uh, here we go. Let me get rid of it. Boom, boom. And we're through. Okay, there we go. Anyway, uh, but uh, I was going to do that tonight on the show and take you around and show you stuff. But the problem is, is that I suddenly realized the show is also audio and some people would be missing it, so... Anyway, let me, uh, you hear that? Somebody's calling, and of course, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, our old friend, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 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 oops, 
You got to turn that down. Uh, give me also give me your picture there, Charlie Wallace. There we go. There's Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Hi. Hi. How you doing this evening? Pretty good. Yeah. So did you hear any of that story about uh, about uh, Dr. John? Yeah, yeah, I remember Dr. John. I loved his music. God, I loved his music. He was terrific. So, anyway. Uh, so, Dr. John. Oh, here comes Phil. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a Phil-filled Phil night. Uh, let me see here. Let me... I tried to, I tried to bring him in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's the problem? Hmm. I don't understand it. I'm clicking on it. There we go. Okay, now he's in. All right. For some reason, I had some trouble uh, bringing him in. Let me see here. Let me uh, let me find out where I'm going to put him. Uh, put him in the uh, uh, scuba diver. There we go. Okay. And there, there's Phil. Hi, Phil. How you doing? All right. What happened with your photo thing yesterday? Uh, I took two firsts. Yeah. First in uh, 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 mon uh, black and white, mm -hmm. uh, and a first in for a color. God, I, I imagine that at that club you could take a selfie and you'd get an award. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, they've got me in basic in one category and intermediate in another. They got to move me up. Uh, everybody else was competing in masters, and you know if you're not there that long. Uh, they're, they're supposed to move move you up. They finally moved me up in some categories, but they don't have enough people in other categories, and so they're it's a, it's a problem. But uh, that happened to me when I went to uh, when I went to high school. Yeah, uh, they figured I was a moron or something, <laughs> so they put me in all these remedial classes, and I was getting straight A's. Right. And they said, well, if he's getting straight A's, he can't be that stupid. So they put me in regular <laughs> classes, and I was a C student. You know, fuck them. I could have gone to college for crying out loud. I could have gone to Harvard. Yeah, well, you should have just told them that you were Jackie Coop. Uh, I mean, uh, Jackie Coogan. Yeah. 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 You know, there's yeah. a resemblance. Yeah. Uh, you know, I loved you in the, uh, what was it, the Monsters? Yeah. 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 I'm getting to feel like, ja family. I'm getting to feel like uh, 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 Jackie Coogan, you know. Yeah. Aren't we all? Yeah. Well, yeah. not Charlie. I mean, he, he doesn't <laughs> age. <laughs> I think I have to go get an aspirin. I'm having a, getting a headache. The weather is just attacking me. Yeah. It, it's only like 35, 37% humidity here and like 85 or 75 degrees, but it feels a lot hotter. Well, because 35% of that humidity is 100% of the humidity. Yeah. You see. It's the way it's only ten percent humidity here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, well, you're in Arizona. Oh, yeah, but that's yeah. Dr it's dry heat, right? Yeah. It, the, they always say, yeah, it may be hot, but it's dry heat. Fuck you! It's still two hundred degrees <laughs> for crying out loud. So you melt when you walk across the yeah, street. Yeah. Your your shoes yeah. stick to the pavement. You know. You know, sometimes it does get hot enough to melt the asphalt. You know, even when it's hot, when it's hot here, I have to bend down and touch the pavement when I'm walking my dog to make sure she's not going yeah. to yeah. Uh, injure her paws. Yeah. Well, the goofiest yeah. thing I ever saw in my life was during the winter. I, I got into an elevator in my apartment building downtown, and I looked down at this dog. This woman has her dog on a leash, and the dog is wearing these little looked like the dog was a uh, a cough, uh, what do you call it a poker table? Well, he's folding poker tables with a little little caps on the bottom yeah. oh really those were booties Protect to keep the, the, the dog from dog's feet from freezing hmm. I, well that makes yeah. sense i mean you know sometimes you 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 know you touch your bare skin to ice and and it yeah. sticks yeah yeah you're right about that so anyway so you beat up on these old men yesterday and yeah, yeah, and uh, matter of fact, I forgot to bring it home. But in the uh, the previous one, I got in, the, in their newspaper uh, for best of show. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So one of my shark. But pictures. the thing is, there should be a limit on the pictures that you bring in. In other words, you're probably bringing in some pictures that are 20 years old, right? 
No, it was the sharks that I uh, I photographed in March. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, the color one, uh, I was experimenting with fireworks uh, last year, uh, and I and I found a way that if you op- uh, if you keep the shutter open, and then you and you turn your focus from uh, uh, you know all the way over mm-hmm. uh, from left to right. Yeah. Uh, while and keep the shutter open while that firework is exploding, you can get a very uh, unusual uh, firework, and uh, so that's uh, what I used last night in the color. Yeah, I played with a cam. I, I had a, a thing I used to do, and I can't remember how I did it now, but I would uh, I would literally while I was taking a photograph of somebody leave the lens open. This was at night. Yeah, and then I would I would uh, I would shake the camera. So the people in the center of the picture were okay, but the rest was kind of really ethereal. Yeah. Well, it's it's like uh, leaving the uh, leaving the shutter open and and panning while something is moving, and then the background is 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 blurry and the uh, object is in focus. Uh, sometimes with a car or a runner yeah. or some. Well, this is not exciting, is it, folks? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Photography. Oh, oh letter. Well, you got a letter. It got some mail. Oh. Got some mail. All right. Well, hey, we got mail. Well, no, what was that? I don't know. It was, uh, she was waving some piece of paper at me. Probably the, uh, well, I'm not married, so it can't be the divorce papers. Well, it's probably, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the summons. Yeah, uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, so, uh, where was I? Oh, uh, man. Uh, you were going to get a, uh, a pill. Uh, no, a no I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Yeah. Mm. No, I'm so, feeling nauseous. Yeah. Mm. What, what's nice about this club is that they belong to a Northern California deal where there's 14 other clubs, mostly old people. And, uh, and then they have professional judges, and you're judged against those other 14 clubs. So, uh, and I've done pretty good in that, too. So it's not just the ones I'm beating up that are down the street. You don't go to it because you like photography. You go to it for the ego. Not, no, no. Uh, the, uh, my, um, uh, the guy who owns my building uh, was a member, mm-hmm. and that's how I met my uh, store manager or the, my operations manager. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he came out of retirement. I met him while doing photography, and I asked him if he wanted to work part-time, and he's been with me six years. So uh, and they both belong to this club, and uh, so I said, "Gee, you never asked club. me to go with you." Well, it's it's hey, it's uh, first and third Wednesdays. <laughs> first and third Wednesdays. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. God, I'm waiting to get a big case of the trots. See, that's what I talk about. Because tonight I made ribs and they were so good, mm. <laughs> but I put these spices on them, and the next day I pay for it. You yeah. know. So I'm. Well, I, I understand. We can't eat what we used to eat. Oh, I used to be able... I had a cast iron fucking stomach. I used to we be able did. to eat the hottest, spiciest foods alive. And now I just have a... If I have chicken skin, I get the trots. Mm. You know? Yeah. Like, a girlfriend always goes... Because I love chicken skin. There's nothing better than chicken skin, right? Well, it's well, fat. When I you, mean, but that no, shouldn't but, bother you. When you're eating... The, well, no, maybe it should bother me. When you're eating uh, not the Not on your diet. No, but w- it, for my stomach, my mm-hmm. my uh, IBS, it's deadly. Yeah. You know? Wow. So, the, uh, so, I mean, I... But I, I love skin, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, to me, it's the flavoring, the very flavorful part of the chicken. The actual white meat is dull. Yeah, well, there, there could there could be something going on with your IBS and inflammation. Uh, a couple of years ago, I talked about something called an ALCAT test, A L C A T. Yeah. And uh, what they do is they test your blood against 200 uh, foods and chemicals to see how your blood reacts and whether it creates uh, when you get inflammation. Mm-hmm. So it could be not that the chicken skin is bad for you. But right now, uh, until you eliminate certain foods that are creating the IBS, uh, you have what they call leaky gut. And uh, you can find out what those foods are, avoid them, ac- actually heal well, your Well, then gut. Compared, uh, comparing that to my diet, I would probably have to quit eating everything. Well, yeah. 
Uh, matter yeah. of fact, when I had it done, I, I don't have Crohn's, but uh, uh, my nutritionist said... But you are a you, Crone. Yeah, she uh, yeah. says, there's so many things you can't eat. People with Crohn's can eat more stuff than you. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, so I, I find that if I, if I have the, these ribs, sometimes I don't have a problem, and other times I have a problem. Oh, yeah, here, here, well, that, that could be here, here, intermediate. Here, here comes SG, who's decided to call during the show rather than right. before the show. Uh, and it looks like he's getting through. Yeah, he's through, but we don't have him. He hasn't got a camera on. Uh, Turn your camera on, this SG. This thing is vibrating, so it might be working on it. There he is. Huh? There I'm he is. Of. Okay, let me see here. Um, no? No? Uh, that's your, not him. your camera is uh, foggier than Tony's, and uh, you yeah. must have something on the lens. Or I, I, I don't know what's wrong with him, but uh, we'll uh, I let me see here. No, oh, you know, uh, is there a light behind you, SG? That uh, uh, yeah, there, there you go. It's, it's just it's a the, little better. Yeah, there's a light that's uh, uh, behind you, and it's um, maybe washing things out. Hang on. Boy, okay. it, it, that, it, every time you call, there's always a dozen problems we have to deal with. <laughs> well, it's like that for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It, chat chat amongst yourself. Clean your fucking lens. Get some Windex or something. <laughs> Jeez almighty. Oh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just wait while you fuck with the... <laughs> you know. If you were worth it, I'd put up with it, but you're not. <laughs> there we That's go, and it pleasant. still look. It still looks shitty. Well, it looks worse. Chat yeah. amongst yourselves. It looks worse. Why don't you take that thing and just dump it in water or something? You know, or maybe it oh, is. He's in got water. a ceiling light on. That's what it is. No, no, no. The whole thing oh, is it's like not. It's, lens. it's the Tony <laughs> effect. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, it rubs off. Yeah. yeah. Well, it should, but apparently it doesn't. Apparently it's not. <laughs> Gee, maybe yeah, I should okay. put some Vaseline on mine. <laughs> you didn't? You mean you you didn't? Uh, n n n no. <laughs> oh, okay. You know. Um, but anyway, oh here here we go. Now what what's he got now to clean it? He's got a real rag. Okay. Uh, yeah. And and uh, uh, yeah. No. 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 Uh, it's not so good. Not That's so good. That's better. It's better than before. Yeah, yeah, not so good. Not so good. Let me uh, let me uh, see That's here. better than it was. Yeah. Is it, it is better than it was. Yeah, it is better than it was. Uh, but then again, uh, oh, oh. this this is interesting radio. This is oh, this is great radio. Uh, let me see here, Stein Zeller. Let me put uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jeff. In it. Uh, oh, now it's worse. What is on that lens? Have you yeah. been wiping boogers on it? <laughs> no. What is wrong with your lens? No, there's really something going on. Can you see yourself on? Uh, you, can you see your camera? No. No. Chat, no. chat amongst yourselves. Uh, oh well, how are you guys? It's good to see you again. How are you? Don't don't pay any attention to the blurry guy at the bottom of the screen. Doesn't Jeff look relaxed? <laughs> yeah, Jeff. You know something? I got to tell you, <laughs> Jeff looks healthier than the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Great color in his face. That beard is is just the best That's beard. I could That's never. That's because his doctors give him good attention. <laughs> but you know, I asked my doctor the other day yeah. to, to give me this diabetes medicine that a couple of my friends take called Trulicity, and both of their um, uh, numbers, uh, you know, their A1C went down to like 5.9, and uh, one of them went from 10 to 5.9 uh, with this stuff, and. Uh, Kaiser, they want to give me insulin. I said, I don't want insulin. I, I want Trulicity. Once a week, you stick the thing in your leg, and uh, and you're okay. Yeah, and but, what do they tell so you? So, they tell me no. Fuck you, so, we don't like you, we want you to suffer? No, they want to give me insulin. So, uh, I'm just... more expensive, isn't it? <laughs> no, I think this Trulicity is more expensive. Oh, Trulicity is wow. much more expensive. Yeah, because they advertise on TV, and when they advertise yeah. on TV, 
they want to make money. Okay. Yeah, and so uh, I, I'm going to try to figure out, you know, I, I went with the Kaiser because here it is mid-year that I, I got on uh, uh, Medicare because my birthday's this month. Oh, but, but don't go on Medicare, Phil, because that's, that, that's socialism. <laughs> No, that that was uh, paid for. Uh, oh, we just, uh, we, just, oh, we, we just, lost him. We just lost him. Yeah, yeah he's, he he's trying though. Uh, so you know, I'm gonna see if I can switch. I don't. I'm gonna find out what plans my friends are on, mm-hmm. and uh, that get this kind of service. And I'm just gonna go to those. Yeah, yeah. You know, when they have open enrollment. Let me put uh, let me put uh, uh, Jeff in in that place. Okay. Uh, I got to redo this. You know, every, so every time you put Jeff in that place, and now he's blurry. No, I'm only every kidding. time, <laughs> every time he uh, he calls. Uh, yeah, there, there we are. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Okay, and uh, let me go up to three here. Let me do this, and there we go. All right. Okay. Uh, I know some people that say that the price of insulin has gone up so much they can't yeah. afford it anymore. Yeah, yeah, people are cutting down on their doses and their diet. Well, I, I just don't know why you want to involve yourself in socialism. Uh, well, I don't involve myself well, in socialism. Well, Medicare is pure socialism. No, it's, uh, it's is, is Social Security socialism? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you pay into into a plan... Uh, and uh, for specific services like Medicare as well as Social department. Security, not the fire department. The fire yeah. department's paid with your uh, with your taxes, your um, uh, homeowners' taxes. Yeah, but, everybody but pays that, for But it. that's socialism. That's socialism. Everybody pays it, for it. That may be socialism, but the Medicare and the Social Security, I actually specifically paid for those services. No, you didn't. Yeah, oh yeah. I do my payroll every two weeks. I know that I'm paying for Medicare and Social Security. No, you're paying into those systems so that everybody yeah. can benefit from it because we're all pooling our money well, together. Well, how come my It's my called socialism, benefit. Phil. How, how come you my heard benefit of? is based you, you on You don't know what you don't know in. what socialism is and you don't know what communism is. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, <laughs> you know, how come your social security is based benefit is based on the amount that you paid in on as your, as per your payroll your your paycheck it is based so if, it, it, so, it, yeah, it is based so if, of, it, it, it is but uh, it, you will still make a minimum amount yeah. you know no matter how much you make or don't well, make a friend of mine who's an art dealer in other words what never, i'm saying what i'm saying is let's say you threw in 25 cents over the years to Social yeah. Security, and now you get old and you apply for Social Security, there's a certain amount of money you're going to get whether you put a lot of money in there or a little bit of money in there. I'll tell you. This friend of mine, he, he had an art gallery. Uh, matter of fact, uh, he knew you. Why do we always, why, why do we always have to hear about money. your friends? Well, what, what is this? this? Guy's we getting, believe you this guy's, have friends, Phil, in spite of everything. This guy's less than $150 a month from Social Security, even though he's 71, Yeah. Uh, uh, because he... Uh, contributed so little uh, you know there there were years when you know my ex was the one that was doing the filing and uh, you know I was showing zero and it was all showing up on her thing and so my benefit wasn't as high as it could have been mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah is anybody so, else going to call us tonight by the way and you know I think oh uh, you know I tell you what what uh why don't I just sit back and you guys have a conversation? Because I don't want to stifle the the conversation. <laughs> you know, I want to make sure that everybody gets well. An if, when we get, when we get more, you can do that. No, for no, us. no, 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 uh, no, 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 no. When we get more, you, you, you can gotta do work that for with us. what you got. <laughs> well, well, should I just come on, tough Should guy. I just get rid of you now? Sure. <laughs> I, I bet all of a sudden people would call like crazy. Okay, I'll take you up on it. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, right. folks. You know, it, 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 SG, see what a pain in the ass SG is? Comes on, monopolizes Fine. everything, trying to clean his goddamn camera, and then he hangs up on us. 
When he he did, th- he's trying to fix it. He didn't no. know there was a problem until we pointed no, it out. No, every time he calls, there's a problem. Well, you know. Yeah, okay. You know, that's, it, it monopolizes, that's the way it is. monopolizes our attention. Every time you get on the air, you got a problem. Yeah, even when you're off no, the I air, don't. you got Well, you want me to get off now? I'll go. Well, that's not a bad idea. Hey, I Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'll get rid of me here. Wait a minute. There we go. Uh, yeah, here we go. Goodbye, everybody. See you later. There we go. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, I decided that I, I like that new Apple uh, Mac Pro. Oh, oh boy. Oh, $30,000 one? No, no. The only thing I'm going to buy is the stand. Yeah, the stand. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. You know, I'll, I think I'll come back, folks. There we go. Um, I uh, you know, somebody said last night. I bet Phil wants to buy that. You did? No, no, I didn't say. No. It. Somebody oh, else. Oh, said oh, it. oh, that's right. Yeah, somebody did say. And that. I Scott. said he'd probably be stupid enough to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I. Do you know how much? Mean... You know, fully loaded. If you went and got like what I have, grand. I have the trash can fully loaded here, yeah. and if I were to have bought it at its full price rather than buying it used. It would have cost me close to eight thousand dollars. That was maxing more out. Than that. What? It, it, maxing out more everything. More. If you if you went yeah. online right now, took the trash can, added all the stuff I have in here, it would come to eight thousand, maybe change. Okay. Uh, this thing starts at six thousand, and it doesn't give you diddly squat. It's got less than I've got in this thing. You know? Does it start at fourteen cores? I, no, no, it starts. It starts. It, 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 starts it starts. Starts at eight cores. Okay. If you you can then add stuff. You can add the graphics cards, and you can add this and add that and everything. When you top it out and max it out, okay. 35. No, forty five thousand dollars. Wow, is You're, that three three six K monitors too? No, that's without the monitors. Then you got to yeah, get the monitor. Extra- then you got to get the monitor, which is five thousand dollars. And then if you want the stand, it's another thousand dollars. Yeah, but you know, uh, you can get that thing set up for a rack system. Uh, and I would imagine if you had the monitor, you wouldn't want a single stand. You'd probably have two or three monitors. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I spend fifteen thousand yeah, dollars on fucking monitors. Monitor. You know, uh, 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 Tim Cook can blow me, and I know he can do it too. You know, so well, I'm not, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not. It, it's just, oh, go ahead. Yes, Jeff. Uh, are any of you guys, uh, like, investing in, in Apple? Like, yeah, you have some of the stock or anything No, like that? no. They just have our money. Do, do they, do they, are they making money there? Uh, yeah. Off their fucking I, phones and uh, iPads and stuff I like that. I think they're. Uh, they're uh, very smart and strategically going for a specific market, which is uh, super high end. You know, in in uh, in business, you have to either go to the high end or the low end. Really, there's no middle. Well, the thing is, though, they are not they're not really offering hobbyists and uh, and, and 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 professionals on the low end. There's, you know, if, unless you want to get one of those mini max maxed out, and and they don't do the trick, okay? I think the thing you want to do, folks, is as much as you hated the trash can, start buying them up. You I'm know? happy with mine. I'm happy with mine, and, and I think and for the next few years that it'll give me everything I need. It's it's got all the all the power to do what I'm doing here, and right now my CPU is at eleven percent. Okay, yeah. so you know, I mean, what 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 do we you know? Uh, uh, I'm very happy with it now that well, I got it my, working. My trash can isn't as fast as yours. It's only got 16 gigs, uh, which I can in- increase, and six core, uh, and and uh, I think it's a one gig uh, SSD. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, my thing has one, uh, two things that you didn't that you didn't have. I never had to send it back to Apple. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I only but, paid two grand for it. Okay, here's the best part about me paying 3.3 and, and having to send it back to Apple. To correct all their mistakes in fixing it, yeah. they replaced literally almost everything 
except for the SSD, which didn't need it, you know, and the fan, and the power unit, the fan, uh, everything else is, has been replaced. Now, I'm not saying that it's all been replaced by new stuff. It could be refurb parts. But it's, it's, it's like a brand-new machine sitting oh. here. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you had to go through some service, but... Yeah, you, but you now it. that I did, I lucked out, you mm -hmm. know? I was thinking of writing this company and saying, thank you for sending me a terribly defective computer. <laughs> <laughs> because guess what happened? Along the yeah. way, for three hundred and twenty-six dollars or fifty-six dollars, I was able to upgrade it to okay. completely well, new. The new Mac Pro. If you're shooting uh, 8K, uh, and uh, you, you let's say you have one of those Red Dragons, or you know, they and don't shoot and 8K. Mm -hmm. They don't shoot 8K. Yeah, they're 8K. No, they don't. I know the Dragon. I know the Red. Doesn't yeah. shoot 8K. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there, 8K. there are. There are no. 8, I don't know of any 8K cameras out there. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me let me go to oh, Red's uh, website. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think you're going to find 8K there. You may find 5K. Uh, no, the monitor for the Apple. It is says 5K. it can do 8K. It doesn't mean that you you you're going to be able to generate 8K. I'm pretty sure the Red is 8K. Uh, I'm t I'm telling you, I don't think the red is 8K. Yeah. You know, right. and secondly, what do I need with 8K? Because I can't afford a red, okay? Uh, so I just clicked on something with red, and it said something about 5K. Yeah. Uh, well, the Gemini uh, is a new unit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. By the way, by the way, you know, the human eye can't even see 4K. So I... Well, I, I, it, but that's not the point. The point is, is you shoot it in, in let's say, eight or six, and, and then you render it down to, to four or, or 1080p even. So? And, well, you have well, a much better... I, do, do you do much rendering, Phil? No, but my a friend video? Matt does. No, I do. And I'm telling you, if I, I take a show and I shoot it at 1080, and then I take it down to 720, oh, you're going to see the Real-time 8K workflow. Uh, uh, real-time right 8K workflow that doesn't say the camera shoots in 8K. Well, it's the red. No, it but says, it, no, the camera, what's the specification of the camera? Uh, 5K. Okay, uh, then shut well, the... The one I'm looking at is 5K. Shut, shut the fuck the up. They, they, don't, they don't have an 8K camera. Okay, well... It, it's real time. 8K. Just type in. Oh wait a minute! It says right on the front of the goddamn thing, 8K. Uh, on the mon the monster or monstro, the DSMCS2 monstro. It says 8K. Uh, they have different ones. This one's uh, the the uh, Dragon X is 5K. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, yeah. So they they have different ones. There's one that's 8K. Uh, and, well, hold on a second. I'm just going to put in 8K video cameras yeah okay let me see what we come up with uh okay there's a canon full frame but then none of these are are that red uh, digital look up cinema. the red go, go to red.com here's red digital cinema uh and um uh, red yeah, the oh, red 8k the cameras 8K. now the best image in the industry right okay. the mo m o n s t r o is 8k yeah uh and and, and how much is that camera I don't know, probably 50 grand. Yeah, so am I going to buy it? No. No, no you rent them when you're going to no, shoot. What's in, you're only going to have a shoot. What's interesting is that when I first uh, heard about RED, the great thing about RED was they had this incredible camera, and it, its, uh, its cost was incredibly cheap. Right. And now they've gone into being a camera company where you can spend 50 grand, 60 grand on a camera. Uh, you know, it's not the company it used to be. But that's the same camera that you, you would have to pay two and three hundred thousand for, you know, in the in the old days. Well, for, uh, everything was more expensive in that field because it was it was more expensive to produce those items. Today, it's not as expensive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a people, number of underwater people, divers. Listen, the audience doesn't know what the fuck we're talking about. Anymore. Well, you go to red.com. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, everybody go to red.com. You'll be bored out of your wits. It, <laughs> red.com you know well anyway that new computer will will render this kind of stuff yeah but and i don't i don't give a shit i'm not going to do 8k well you know you're still 
if you had a car, you would still crank the thing in, in the front, you know? And I've got a very powerful machine here. When I do video, it's amazing how fast it renders the video, you know? Uh, and it renders it in real time if I want to play it. It's just that when I finally want to make a file out of it, it has to take a little bit of time to render. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted, you bought my old Mac, uh, Mini Mac. Yeah. And that was a fast machine. That was a good, it was a good little machine. It wasn't terrific, but it was good. Well, at the time, it was the fastest thing you could get in a Mini. In a Mini, yeah. But the, the, that's saying like the, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was before to... they came out with eight cylinders, <laughs> but uh, this thing, you know, if I if I slide the contrast slider or something, I, I get almost immediate response. I don't. There's no lag. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm sure you know with your 12 core that that's oh, true 12 too. 12 core but... just it, it screams. It just screams. Yeah. You know, it rendering for certain things like I do a rendering every night in taking the larger file that the that the uh, this thing makes and bring it down to a, a, a much more compressed file. Usually it used to take uh, 25 minutes. Now it takes 10. Boom, mm. zip. You know, so I, I, uh, I'm very happy with it. Anyway. Yeah. I'm going to have to find out, can you take a WAV file that's, let's say, 80K and take it down to 5K? Megs, 5 megs? Uh, I, I, to begin with, I don't think an audio file would be that huge. Yeah, I have one. and um, uh, No, I mean, my, my this show every night, the audio file is about 50 megabytes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know how to do it. But if I put it on a, uh, on a fob and sent it to you, do you think you could play with what? it? And, what? What do you want me to do? Uh, I, have, um, I have this uh, message on hold. For my phone system, yeah, and it used it used to be on a CD, yeah, and um, and uh, you know, so when you put somebody on hold, it plays like little advertisements. Mm -hmm. So, what what's happening now is I just got a voice over IP system, and when I try to download it mm -hmm. to to their thing, it, it was too big of a file and it wouldn't take it. No, I see. Okay. By the way, we've been joined by the lovely and attractive Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Uh, yeah, well, uh, send that to me, and I, I'll do nothing with it because I charge. All right. Because I, uh, I'll send you the bill. <laughs> the check will be. No, in the mail. what do you want? What do you want the file changed into? Uh, the same wave file, but I want it reduced in size. Hmm. Compressed. Well, I, I guess. I think I could do that, but yeah. I don't, right. I, how do I reduce? All, I know how to reduce video. I, I, uh, because I uh, do so much video, but I've never had to reduce audio. Yeah. Why do well, you want I'm, to? Why I'm do you want baffled. to compress it down? To five gig or oh. five, five meg. Why? So that I can download it to the Verizon Voice over IP site, and it will work on uh, my voice on hold or my message on hold. You got me mixed up here. You can't just send them your file. No. Hmm. Uh, and now that I bought the system, they mm -hmm. give you no service. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, that's that's par for the course, I guess. Hello there, Kevin. How are you? All right. How are you, Alex? Yeah. How how's your health, by the way? How are you feeling? I'm hanging in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm still uh, messing with the uh, the gizmo. Yeah. How's the gizmo working for you? You happy with it or? Yeah. It was uh, giving me some problems last week. I was up in Oregon all last week. Uh, helping my buddy up there with mm -hmm. the, the ALS, but uh, <clears throat> I had some problems with one program, and then I switched over to another one, and it seemed like it was uh, doing much better, so I'm happy with that. Yeah. So, run through a few of those, see well, what happens. That kind of sounds good. You know, so, it's uh, take, it, take a while to get it all tweaked out, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, you're happy basically with what it does. I mean, it... it uh, so it, far, it, yeah. It, it has it's served got you. its ups and downs. It's served, got its ups and downs, but... Is it, has it served you as advertised? Uh, you know, <laughs> I think it could be better. Oh, okay. All right. But uh, I'm trying to be patient with it. Yeah. Uh, patient. Yeah, no, you're, you know... Uh, uh, welcome, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, to... Uh, well, actually... Well, Charlie's got his health problems, or he had them. Mm -hmm. 
lost a couple of toes. And how many did you lose total? Six. Six toes, all on one foot. That was the, the amazing <laughs> was part of it. <laughs> yeah. What do you do? Do you wear something in your shoe that... No. No, you just... I learn... just got empty space in the front of my left shoe. Well, how do you balance? Not very well. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Well, I don't balance too well, and I got all my toes, you know. Uh, but So we got Charlie with the toes. We got uh, Kevin with his back, I guess. Basically, in my legs, yeah. In your legs, we got Jeff with his, uh, I don't know, his uh, pacemaker that he has on stun, okay. And and then we have Phil who's lost his <laughs> prostate. So who and me? I'm just I actually am the healthiest one out of the group. <laughs> your tooth. I mean, this is yeah. If you want to call this program, you must have an illness, folks. You must have some kind of infirmity. I'm thinking of banning Ray Renati from. I'm thinking of banning Ray Renati from this program because he doesn't seem to have any medical problems. <laughs> you know, uh, Tony doesn't have any medical problems. He has a few mental problems, but he doesn't have a medical problem. <laughs> and and I, I feel that I'm I'm going to have to kick him off the show. Who else? Who, who else do we have that's healthy? John Rockwell. <laughs> well, yeah, he's dead. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, if you're dead, are you healthy, though? That's the question. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I would say so. You're right? not. You're non-symptomatic. No more pain. No more pain. You know. No more problems. Yeah. No more problems. No more bills. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, so I hear about all these people dying, like J Dr. Hey. John, I felt really bad about, because I liked the guy. He was, he was cool. Did who he? Took, who took John's Yeah, he apartment? died. 77. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Didn't John wild. live in a in an apartment in a in a, in a semi-cool area, you know, Wait downtown? A what do you mean? Who? Uh, Nate? John Rockwell. Sure. John Rockwell. No, it wasn't, it wasn't a cool apartment. Cool? Yeah, well, I thought it was a few floor walk up, but uh, it, it's what is known, known in Fr in uh, France as a hovel. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. Anyway, uh, let me see here. A uh, New Orleans musician, uh, John, uh, uh, John uh, Re Rebenack. It, his name wasn't oh, Malcolm John Rebenack. Okay, because we knew him as Mac. Um, better known as Dr. John died. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee and six-time Grammy Award winner died Thursday from a heart attack. Wow. Uh, did over 30 albums in his career. It was probably most closely identified with wrong place, uh, right place, wrong time. Yeah. Uh, the Night Tripper. Well, also right. another song, what, what a Night, that he did, yeah. uh, which was written about a friend of mine and his girlfriend. The girlfriend was Jerry Wexler's daughter, and uh, the, uh, the guy in the song was her boyfriend. And it's all about, the song's all about Mac trying to hit up on Anita. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden, her boyfriend walks in. You know, she walked in with her best friend Jim. And that was his name. So uh, well, way back, way back in the '80s, when I was uh, on the CB radio, my uh, handle was Doctor John. Yeah, I was known as Doc. Yeah, well, he he was just terrific. His music was amazing. I loved him. Yeah, I mean, I I just great it, piano player. Yeah, well, when he sat down in my studio that night. And played the piano, and I didn't know he could play the piano because he was Doctor he was Doctor John the Night Tripper at the time. It was doing yeah. all this gree gree shit. Yeah. Um, I didn't know he could play the piano, and I said, yeah. I said to him, "Where'd you learn to play the piano?" And he said, uh, "I didn't know you could play the piano." He says, "I learned my my tutor, the guy who taught me, was uh, Professor Longhair." And then I started going and getting records by Professor Longhair, and I heard where this came from. And I will have to say that Mac actually played piano better than Professor Longhair. But Longhair played it so uniquely, at that, and it was his own style, that techno technically John was better. But aesthetically, there was something about Longhair. And of course, John told me, listen to Longhair. This guy is, was the best there ever was. And his name was a bird. 
I can't remember his first name. And he um, got into some kind of trouble and lost his cabaret license. And if you didn't have a cabaret license, you couldn't play in, uh, in bars and things like that, play piano. And so he, for years, for like 20 years, he couldn't play in clubs in New Orleans. Mm. And uh, it, but his music is just, I mean, I, I play some for you right now, but then I get into all kinds of trouble with YouTube and they can't play that. Well, you know, I'm trying to show people what Professor Long had. Just go, uh, yeah. go, go uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Google Professor Long here. I'm sure there's some music online. Go to, go to YouTube. For, I don't know how those guys get, get it done. But on YouTube, you put in Professor Longhair, and there's a song by Professor Longhair. And then if I played that clip from YouTube that was put up there by somebody, they would tell me, you can't do that. It's in copyright. Then how did they do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Well, well, you know, who else used to be good is uh, Leon Russell. I loved Leon Russell. Leon too. Russell was incredible. Yeah, and oddly enough, one of the best albums he ever did in his whole life was the last one he ever did, the one he did with Elton John. Uh huh. Uh, if if you heard the album, no, I haven't lay heard your that. lay your hands on it. It is just it's too. To begin with, Elton John was in the early days he traveled, you know, as a set opening act for Leon Russell, and mm. Leon Russell affected him. And when Leon got older and not too well. Yeah. Uh, Elton decided he wanted to do something nice for Leon, and he did a whole album with him, and it is terrific. I heard about it, yeah. Yeah, it won the Emmy. It won the Grammy for that year, for Album of the Year. I always liked something. Tightrope. That was a good, good oh, album. Oh, that was a great album. I mean, yeah. all his stuff was just terrific. But you, where, do you know where Leon Russell started out? He, he was a producer. And what big hit? What big hit did he did he produce? Ah, uh, God, I know I can't remember. Gary Lewis and the Playboys. Everybody loves a clown. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he produced that, um, and he was he was just he was terrific. He was, you know, I think we liked him for the same reason we liked uh, Doctor John. It was a kind of that real funky quality, that yeah. genuine funky quality, you know. But anyway, we lost Mac. We lost Leon a while back. You know, they're they all just lost SG. <laughs> well, that that's no big loss, okay? <laughs> well, uh, it's time now, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, uh, Phil Meyer to uh, get back at us for talking about him last night. You heard the show last night, right? Last night's show? Yeah, I, before I fell asleep. Uh, which part? Uh, well, we're, we're just talking oh, about. Uh, oh, it's Trump time. What? What do you mean it's Trump time? Oh, oh you were saying that uh, you you were going to talk about anything but Trump, so I couldn't yeah. get back at you. How he fucked up the day yesterday, or how he fucked it up today? <laughs> I, well, uh, I think there's a woman. I I'm just looking at a headline. It says, "Woman stabbed self three times because she's tired of living in Trump country." You know, Poor woman. hey. Uh, you guys well, because being that. stabbed three times by herself felt better than living in Trump country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but just remember, I, not to repeat myself, in fact, you guys pain, can learn from a, that. A, a painful rectal itch, and I speak from, uh, from experience here over the last week or so, painful rectal itch is better than Trump. P-R-I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, what, uh, what do you want to talk about? Painful rectal itch. Oh, you got it. And how it pertains to Donald Trump. Well, he doesn't have it. Oh, you don't know. We well, don't. Did you see him? I, by the way, did you see him in that fucking tuxedo the other night at the Queens? He's making uh, history by, you know, changing the, the way people dress. Yeah. This is what's you know. called nouveau slob. <laughs> hey. I thought it looked pretty good until somebody commented that the thing was too long. Did you notice the belly going over? I mean, yeah. come on, uh, you, uh, Phil. I, I don't notice that over mine. F Phil, you, you would not wear that. Okay. No, because I don't wear tail tuxedos. 
I have a couple of tuxedos, but they look more like suits than they do tails. I have a very lovely picture of me with tails uh, posed uh, next to uh, Grace Slick. Yeah. Top hat and tails, by the way. Wow. Now, I've yeah. never done the top hat and tails, but I, you know, it was, I like it. Was the ba- it men, was the Bammy Award show in San Fr- it, was, it was the Bammy Award show in San Francisco, and I decided to uh, show up wearing top hat and, t- and tails. Yeah, and everybody yeah. else had a T-shirt on. Yeah. yeah. Is <laughs> is Grace Slick still alive? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she is. Yeah. Boy, she's got to be an old broad. Um, yeah. Uh, but. Um, um, no, I just I he looked like an absolute fucking slob. I mean, he always sometimes he, when he has to go to those kind of affairs, he looks like a little kid who doesn't want to be there. You know, well, who's that? Was he wearing da- was he wearing one of those long red ties? No, <laughs> you know uh-huh. I heard story about why he wears those long red ties because it's a terrible fashion statement. Okay, yeah, it's a disgusting yeah, it's fashion something. that he feels he is short and it makes him look taller. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I don't know that that would change the perception of your height. Well, he thinks it does. Either that or he's making up for his penis, one or the other. He, it's hiding a lot of stuff. What he dropped from lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't Is he getting fatter? I mean. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would think as president when, and having those sleepless nights, uh, you would lose some weight, you know. Um, uh, does he, is he actually having any sleepless nights? He may not be listening to uh, all the machinations. Well, about, today, uh, today Pelosi was reported in a private meeting, a private setting, of saying that uh, she believed that she didn't want to see him impeach. She just wanted to see him go to jail. Now, uh, do you think that that was to appease her uh, left-wing base? I don't think she said it. Uh, well, that's, that makes sense. Yeah. I, don't, I, I really don't think she said it. And if she said it, good for her. You know, I don't think, uh, you know, I think she's been going against the left-wing base, and I think very smartly so, uh, in that I think... A, an impeachment is a bad idea, and it's bad for any number of reasons. Number one is that even if you started it today, you would not be completed with it by the next election. Yeah, okay? The timing is bad. The timing is bad. You sh- if you want to get him and he gets reelected, then go at him the minute he gets elected. Okay? Then go at they him. They will. But the point is that, uh, and, and I think she also feels that it just will not help the Democratic Party in the eyes of the American public if they go after him that way. But yeah. there is a number of, uh, uh, of uh, Democrats uh, uh, oh. that she needs to at least throw a bone to, and, uh, and that's her way of maybe deflecting you know, I don't the think she has to throw. Talk. I don't think she has to throw a bone to anybody. You know, uh, all she has to keep happy is her constituency, you know? Uh, and and San Francisco loves Nancy Pelosi, right? But she's Speaker of the House, and can't they have a vote to change the Speaker? They can change the Speaker, but I think I think they will all agree that she's doing a pretty damn good job. And just because they are divided on a certain issue doesn't mean that's the reason why you get rid of her. You know, I no, but it, I don't uh, think I don't think is Demo- a distraction. I don't think Democrats are as petty as Republicans in that fashion. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? Huh. We're not petty at all. You know, so. so Okay, well, I guess, you know, delusion is uh, I see, allowed. I see, I see two empty spaces here. Yesterday we had them all filled, by the way, Phil. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's not a problem. Uh, I can give you one, one less space. Well, tomorrow night you're not here again, right? Yeah, I'm actually uh, going to be in the city having a nice steak and uh, with a buddy. Why is it that you look upon steak as being the end all of foods? I mean, you, you seem to think, you know, and it, it, it's not unusual because for years in our society, going out to have a steak meant you had a certain amount of wealth, you know. Um, uh, I'm a Republican. It's like just throwing me red meat. 
no, no. But <laughs> I'm asking you, what, what, what is it? Because you always, whenever you talk about meals, you talk about steaks. I like steak. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I prefer a good steak over just about anything. What would I prefer? You know what I had? Well, I, I mentioned this the other night. I had the ravioli. Uh, that ra- yeah. I will take ravioli any day over steak. You, you see, uh, we were talking about in France and Italy and stopping at these one-off places. Yeah. And, you know, you have escargot and you have this and you have that. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and, and some of these things are just unbelievably delicious. Escargot. But I wait a minute. Are, do you think escargot is delicious? The butter and the garlic. You no, know, wait, wait, but the, the butter and the garlic is. How about the snail? You don't taste the snail. Well, then here's the point. Why not Where just? Else are you gonna eat why, ju- why not just forget the fucking snail and just have the garlic and the butter? Because the fact is, the snail. If you ate it without the garlic and the butter, you go. Bleh. Yeah, but and then you put it on the bread. Well, here, uh, here's how I think they discovered escargot. Okay. Yeah. Guys are always trying to get laid. They're always trying to impress women. So then one day a guy said, look what I can eat. <laughs> Dare me to eat that thing that's crawling up the, up the wall there? Let me show you, right? Yeah. Put a little butter and garlic on that and I'll eat it, <laughs> right? Oh, you're such a man. I'll fuck you. Okay. But now, th- wait a minute, wait a minute. Same way bullfighting was, 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 uh, was invented. Now, what would you say if I go out there and I put a red cape in front of a bull and I let him charge? What you know? Uh, and would you think I was wonderful? I I'd fuck you, think. you know. And so that he <laughs> he had learned that if you have the the cape, because bulls are not the smartest animals in the world, you have the cape in front of the bull and you're shaking it. The bull is going to go for the cape, not for the guy on the side of the cape. You you missed one thing, uh, 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 one important part. What? It, it's not the bullfighting itself that makes the guy a manly man. What it is is the adoration of the crowd towards the guy that makes him more desirable to the woman. But still, so it's, bu- it's, it's to begin with. It's just- the bullfighting is bullshit. If I may use a term, it could be. Uh, no, <laughs> many times it is, because the bull is not going to win. Okay, there's Sometimes no chance. They do. No, no. I, I I heard about one case. George Lopez told me a story about his father took him down to Tijuana, and the bull actually survived. Okay. And he, he, when they were leading the bull out, people were yelling, Viva Toro, Viva la Toro, you know, whatever. And they lead him out, and the next thing you heard was a shotgun blast. <laughs> so they, they never, they never uh, had a chance of surviving. They would, uh, you know, they would stick picks in them, and they were bleeding, and they would weaken them, and then finally the guy would go in for the kill after this bull was so weak he couldn't see straight. Now, do they get... Bull, uh, did they get steaks from bull or just cows? Well, they did. They did in the old days. I for poor people, they would feed them the uh, the bull that was in the ring. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's that great. You would rather, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. You do. Yeah, no. Uh, a steak. The steak you eat in a place is 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 uh, was not bull. Bulls. Do bulls have bulls testicles? The or, 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 yeah. Uh, okay. Well, they, well, uh, yeah, the bull is the male, so you eat the male. Yeah, that's the steak you eat. You don't eat cows. Cows no, they don't slaughter cattle. I, cattle, but not, uh, not, not cows. Well, not milk. Cattle aren't cattle. No, uh, a lot of cattle. Ca- uh, I believe uh, cattle. A lot of cows. I believe cattle. cattle is cattle, but cows are for milk. Okay, that's well, what we they were at one time until you eat them. No, but you, uh, I, does anybody here know that we eat cows? I never hear of eating cows. Oh, I think we eat cows. We yeah. eat yeah. hamburgers from cows. Is yeah, it we really? push them over. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, so. Thank you. Here's what I, you know, these are all the things I don't know about the food I eat, folks. Yeah. So, do you have a lot of uh, uh, love of steak? I love Would you rather eat a really good steak than something else? Well, it depends on what that something else is. I, you know what I would rather not, eat? Not pussy. You know what I would rather eat? 
I'd rather, you know what I'd rather eat uh, than what? steak? Tripe. Oh, I know that, but uh, God. Oh, I make <laughs> tripe. I, I, I'm great at it. Every once in a while, I would go to this Vietnamese thing that they have the noodles and... Uh, the, yeah, that's the, not the where you want to get tripe. You want to get tripe in a Spanish restaurant. Oh, because they, they they put tripe in the one where they put everything, and it's oh, it looks. Uh, I, there's no way I tripe eat it. is wonderful. I would I would you know to me it's a delicacy. Yeah, well I don't eat. You ever meat. had tripe, Jeff? I don't think I ever had it. Isn't tripe belly? You know, it, it's no, like the, no, it's it's the inter the intestines of intern. the. It's it's the intestines of the the inner lining of the cow's stomach. Okay. Don't they use that to to wrap pork sausages? No, no. But the, what it is is it it's kind of fuzzy on one side. It has a really interesting texture, and I love it because my mother used to make it, and uh, so I could hardly wait to have it. So when I grew up, I learned how to make it myself. And, and, and I can make a mean menudo, as it's called. Uh, and um, my mother uh, used to make it. And to me, it's, it's comfort food. You know, it's the thing you, you grew up with. So, hmm. My mother made Swanson TV dinners and meatloaf. Uh, and if we didn't have that, we had reservations out yeah well you know my mother my mother cooked that oh the other thing she taught me how to eat was tongue oh, you know. boy. well tongue is not unusual you you probably yeah, have i'm not tongue. a tongue fan but you know jeff's probably had it you go to a delicatessen and you get yourself i used to like to get tongue and corned beef sandwiches you know yeah. I, so I don't like to go to the male, back i don't like to go male to the, and females are eaten but the males are castrated and become steer okay oh and yeah. then they're beef so here's that. the thing that oh. happens here's the thing that happens to a to a to a cattle uh first we cut their balls off and then they have that's no reason and, and then it were that's being kind because now they have no reason to live <laughs> are they married to a jewish woman yeah yeah <laughs> well i used to talk about ronnie that we had some, we had uh, two male calves, and uh, uh, she castrated one of my cats. I came home, she said, guess what I did today to the cat? Oh, he castrated. And then I always just like to joke about it. And then we had a second male cat, and she castrated that one, so I got rid of her before she got around to me. <laughs> <laughs> Were the cats upset uh, after the procedure? Hmm? Were the cats upset after the procedure? Uh, they kept no. They just kept licking their mythical yeah. balls, you know. Kind of like and Charlie I had this one cat. Toast. Oh, I had this one cat, <laughs> cat Shabbos, who uh, he used to. Uh, once we had him castrated, every now and then he would jump on the female, right, and start humping her, and she'd be going crazy. Okay, we're gonna fuck now. You know, he's grabbing her by the nape <laughs> of the neck and all of that, and she's going. <laughs> And he's starting, and all of a sudden, he would just stop like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, what am I doing? And then she would turn around and start hitting him. Uh, hey, did, was Shabbos the one, uh, did, it, did that cat like to kind of not be seen? No, he loved no? to be seen. He was a wonderful Which cat. Which one shit in the tub? Oh, that was, that was Yantuf. Oh. Well, then I knew Yunta for a short period of time. Yeah, then she and died. I knew Mouse. She died, but she was a mean... And then Mouse, I felt very bad about Mouse dying. Yeah. She died on the couch. Well, you, you took her to the... I year? slept on that couch. But you took... <laughs> didn't you take her to the veterinarians for me? No, no. You were talking about BAM Magazine. Who was the guy that owned BAM Magazine? Uh, uh, Dennis er 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 Erdogan. Well, what, who's his brother? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Have you said guy? Yeah, yeah. He's the one that took him. Oh, okay. Because I couldn't take the cat to the to the uh, to the vets, yeah. you know. Just... I'm pretty sure he's the one that took him because uh, we were sitting around at the table. He was there, and I, I think he did you the favor. Yeah. So it was yeah, yeah Rokian's brother. It, 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 in 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 a way, if I ever had to do a movie and I had to do a crying scene and I wanted to bring tears to my eyes, I would think about Mouse dying. Yeah. You know. 
I, you know, I don't like cats, and that cat was so amazing, blind and could piss in the toilet. Yes. Yeah. Then people will say to me, does she crap in the toilet too? I said, you can't have everything. You know, <laughs> I mean, come well, on, isn't, it enough, isn't it enough that my cat can crap, it can pee in the toilet? She would get on the toilet seat and just sit there and read a magazine, wow. you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, she was Brilliant. amazing. She was an amazing cat. She was very smart, very bright, and went blind and could see better than the other cats. You know, she knew that house from stem to stern. And then but she even Fossilito, she, uh, you know, yeah. had no problem. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, let's not talk about Mouse. I loved her. But she's been dead how many years now? Yeah. Wow. It's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. It's when I first went to San Francisco, which was 1980, I think. 79, uh, 80? 80, you were still in. 80. No, 80. Late 80. 80 82. No, late you went 80. To San Francisco. No, late 80. Oh, late 80, you were living in, in, in the Bay Area. You were living in Sausalito. And I was working at the KMEL. Right. But you lived in Sausalito. I lived in Sausalito. And then uh, uh, in uh, 82, I uh, left. To the city. Uh, yeah, I left the radio station and went to another radio station. Because yeah. the loyal me that I am, uh, they offered me more money. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and that turned out to be a bad situation. Uh, but. Well, not, not too bad, because uh, Camel, I think, plays hip-hop. Does it? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I don't know why I'm so tired these days. I'm, my head is light. And maybe, I'm ha maybe it's a heart problem. I don't know. No, I don't have any chest pains or anything. Yes, yes, yes Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff knows a lot about the heart stuff. Uh, muted, Jeff. Well, Jeff, you're muted. Yeah. Okay, now you go. Uh, I think part of it is is the, the bugs and the, all this stuff that's coming out. The pollen. Yeah. I think um, that's what's doing it. You know. I think it, it affects. Me. Because I go down, you know, I go down to the gym and I get on the cycle and I go for 25 minutes at a good clip, and I'm not even panting and I leave and I'm not feeling <clears> chest pains or anything. But I'm still lightheaded, you know. So. Uh, it could be these new diseases that they're bringing across the border. I see. Yeah, well, so it's fucking Mexicans, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, also what's happening is I guess they come across the border and ICE is taking the, uh, and Border Patrol is taking the drugs that the people have, and they mm. said that they're medications. So they're confiscating those medications. Hmm. I wonder if those medications are cocaine and uh, fentanyl and uh, marijuana. Yeah, all those people with their children are bringing drugs across the well, border. Well, they rent those children. Yeah, they rent you know, them. I see. Yeah. Well, they put that yeah. stuff down their pants, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, or, it's, or, it's from, uh, well, it's it from, like the, it's from the Mexican yeah, yeah. company Rent a Nino. All over it's from a yeah. Mexican company called Rent a Nino. Yeah. Yeah. You can get a two for one too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Yes, I was going to tell you that, that I cooked uh, clams tonight. Mm -hmm. You guys ever have uh, that? Yeah. Oh yeah, my mother used to cook clams all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I like oysters too. Yeah, but that's different, Phil. You don't cook oysters. Well, you can, but uh, you the shell, oysters Rockefeller. You shell oysters. Or you can cook them. I used to go to a place out in um, uh, Bodega Bay. Yeah. Or, or Tamales Bay, excuse me. Uh, and I'm trying to remember the name of the place. Uh, uh, oh, that oyster company that's been no, around no, for 100 years? No, no, no. This one was further. This one oh. is, uh, oh, God, what's the name of it again? But anyway, uh, they, they would have, uh, on Sundays, they would do the barbecued oysters. So that's when you had cooked oysters. Cooked. And I would get half of those and half of the raw oysters, you know. Yeah. By now, the way, uh, just in case you don't know, you know what kind of noise annoys an oyster? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll answer that for you. A noisy noise annoys an oyster. <laughs> God bless America. So did you dig those clams that, uh, that or did you just buy them and 
cook them. You, you, I, I, oysters, I never... No, no, no. Uh, clams. Oh, clams? Oh, yeah, you just uh, take them and throw them. First, I, uh, I take they call olive. them steamers? No, uh, I, I put olive oil and, and onions and garlic and, uh, and wine. And uh, then I put the clams in. Huh. When it's all You could steamed. have had Ascar go. <laughs> and, uh, that's it, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, that sounds good. Correct? That sounds very yeah, good. Yeah, it is. Oh, I put uh, chorizo. But yeah. but sometimes, the, the sometimes broth. if the if if one of the clams doesn't open up, you don't eat that, right? They're, right. They, you know, I get them from Costco, and they're always good. Yeah. Really? You know, I find that produce, uh, not produce, uh, uh, meats and stuff yeah. like that at uh, Costco are questionable at best. You know, really, so, well, sometimes you gotta, sometimes you get a great like steak, okay. And and but you got to buy four of them, uh, and usually one of them is not as good as the other th three. Ah, okay, well, and then some weeks they're all terrible. There's no quality. There's no you know. It's funny. I've got this store called Fine Fair. I mean, it's just dopey little grocery store here in Harlem. Uh, Fine Fair always made sure they had places in uh, in depressed neighborhoods. Uh, so they could raise. So the, they can charge high prices uh, when the welfare checks came out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I go down there and I bought this. I buy these ribs, these little baby back ribs, a little, just a little mm. thing, and I spend three hours cooking it, and then we eat it. And it was just delicious. But I bought ribs at Costco, and they're terrible. And I now, how, how do you make your ribs? Usually, when I eat great ribs, it's because they've had they got some sort of smoker. And uh, you, you know, usually smoker. go to a rib place. You don't need a smoker. They, they've got some sort of oven that is. Uh, you can do a smoker, but I mean, you don't have to. What I do is I take uh, the ribs, and I, uh, I I put rub all over them, okay, and then I seal it in foil, and then I put it in the oven for twenty five uh, for twenty minutes at uh, three twenty five, then I lower <laughs> the oven down to. 225 and cook it for another hour and 20 minutes then I take the the foil off put it back in the oven for another hour at 225 and then after that hour I pull it out put the uh, sauce on it then put it back in for about another 20 minutes and for the la for another five minutes I turn on the broiler so I get a char on the top okay so of you bake it basically and then no you just no I, I, yeah, I bake it yeah yeah, yeah, uh, and and I literally these ribs when I make them fall off the bone. Mm. Delicious, just delicious, uh, and it's no real problem. It's a very simple dish to make. I mean, I just told you folks how to do it. It's that simple, you know. So go make them, have a good time, and I think I've got heartburn now. Yeah. No, I think yeah. that's that's the uh, that's the hardest. You get that Alcat test. And uh, find out what it is that, and, and what affects you doesn't necessarily affect anyone else, you know? I don't want the fucking Alcat test. Well, then you'll know what to stay away from and you'll feel better. Well, I don't know why I have a slight uh, heartburn feel here, but anyway. Yeah. You're giving me agita. That's the reason why. Uh, <laughs> hey, um, I was good tonight. By the way, that speech that Trump gave at Normandy was, he's so bad at reading speeches. He's really difference. bad. I mean, it wasn't a badly written speech. It was just badly read. And you could tell he was reading it, and he didn't want to veer from it because he was afraid he would fuck up because he doesn't have the ability to veer from a script. You know, and he's looking back and forth at teleprompters. Remember how he used to give Obama a Obama. bad time for teleprompters? And no, I was just thinking that. Yeah. Uh, um, and it was just kind of like, you know... God, I, you know, we've had other presidents who've been there and given the same speech, or different speech, but the same occasion, and done such a beautiful job of it. Reagan, for instance, g gave the textbook speech on how to give a speech of this sort. And uh, 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 I think Clinton did it, and I think I know that George Bush did it, and then I know that Obama did it. Uh, and uh, they all brought to it a certain dignity, and dignity is something that Trump is incapable of. Well, when they have the 80th uh, 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 tribute, you know, the 80 years, now this is 75, 
But when they have the they're 80, not gonna then do the Trump 80. will be able to they, do it again. They're not going to do the 80. They'll be better at it. They're not going to let do the 80. They're not going to do the 80? No. No, this is oh. the last one. They figure uh, that they figure they'll that, all die. that most of the people, the last of the uh, people who... Well, what are they yeah. now? They're mostly around 90 to 92? They're getting in there, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're lucky they're alive. Well, the, number one, they were lucky they were alive and got through Normandy. Uh, yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, you had a lot, of, a lot of people coming home and who were heroes and around for a long time. But it's starting to happen now that, you know, we're getting to the point where we have no more uh, Holocaust survivors. You know? Yeah. They, it, when you, well, there's a few. Well, we got my friend Jack, who when he was in the concentration camps, I think got out when he was like 14 or 15. Yeah, so exactly. He, and my he's, friend's and dad. He, he's 88 now, but adults who got out are all dead by now. Yeah, my yeah. friend's dad got out. He was 16. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, and, you know, there were a lot of children. Many of them were killed. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, uh, it was uh, you know... It, so whole generations of people who were part of something are no longer going to be there. I mean, yeah. Uh, and it, it's kind of sad because I don't think we learned any lessons from them. You know, yeah. as I said to Jack, I said, uh, what do you think of the Trump thing? And he just said, it scares me. And I said, why? He says, because it's all happening again. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, just scoff at a Holocaust survivor, Phil. But uh, hey, just because uh, you know uh, his his opinion of Trump, I don't think no, is correct. he's I don't not. Think he's not giving you his opinion. Trump with Nazis. You didn't listen to me. He didn't give his opinion of Trump. He said, "I have seen this all before, and it scares me." Well, there's a lot of anti-Semitism right now, yeah. and not only in our country, but especially in Europe, and uh, it, and it's it's not it's not good. And when he, if that's what he's referring to, then he's right. Uh, you know, there's. There's a tremendous amount of anti-Semitism uh, uh, happening. And, uh, hey, in El Sobrani, California, which is near where I live, mm -hmm. some guy put a Schwat sticker in concrete a in his front sticker? lawn. A Schwat yeah. sticker? Yeah, you know. It's a Schwat sticker. sticker? Well, you pronounce it properly. Swastika. All right. Swastika. No, uh, you just anyway, said it again. A swastika. Yeah. You know what a swastika is? It's these little the things street. you get in school when you're good. They give you a swastika. Yeah. 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 Well, if you swash your hands. Yeah. He, he said he was trying to match the pattern on his uh, wrought iron. Uh, oh, bullshit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Even the German guy that lived down the street didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he's full of shit. Did they say how big the thing was? It looked from the. Oh, it looked paper. like it was at least uh, ten foot. Wow. Yeah. What do you think it about? It, about it as, long, as, as long as, as, long as yeah. we're kind of on this topic, what do you guys think of uh, the uh, current trend on the part of like YouTube and Facebook oh, and people like that thing? to do away with hate speech online in their what are called basically their open line forums? As it were, I mean, uh, do you, do you, are you I, comfortable I or uncomfortable right. with that? Huh? I don't think it's right. To, uh, as much as I deplore hate speech, yeah. uh, I feel that it's uh, impinges on the First Amendment, and that if you don't want to listen to it, you don't have to. Well, also, if it's hate speech, there also everybody has access to the same forum, and if yeah. you don't like the hate speech, you can then rail against it. Yeah, you know. it, it's as much as I I dislike Nazis and I dislike hate speech and anti-Semitism, I dislike the censorship of it even well, more. Well, what what happens is is that Facebook and YouTube and people like that will say, "Oh, we're very much against censorship of the internet," and then they go ahead and do their own censorship of the internet. Now, I look, I don't like any of that hate speech. I don't like the uh, what's his name that uh, Alex Louder. Jones and people like that. You know. And the kind of shit they say, but I think in a in a democracy they have the right to say it, as long as they're not being incendiary and as long as they're not creating incidences because of their of their uh, speech. Okay, um, I think that it's wrong to give a sense of permission. 
Which I think that, is what, what Trump is guilty of. Is he gives a sense of permission. Uh, you're reading that into it, and so is the media. Yeah, because uh, everything I say, I'm reading into something. Well, uh, there's maybe this guy, maybe it's Stephen something Crowder. I've ob- Phil. Maybe it's something I've observed. Okay, and that by his actions as president of the United States, he is giving a sense of permission for people to act no. untoward other people. Th- that his. His statements and his what what he says doesn't justify anyone else to act in a, in, a, in another way. Yes, He's not it does. Yes, holding it does. their hands and saying you got to do this. When he approved and, and, of the Charlotte, just, when he approved of what the Charlottesville, um, uh, uh, again uh, the Nazis down there, I think that was giving the Nazis a sense of permission. No, he actually physically said, uh, "I don't I don't condone Nazis and Nazism." Uh, he said that there were after people the fact, on both Phil. sides after the of fact, this statue After thing. the fact, Phil. doesn't matter. There were people on both sides of the statue thing, and there was good people on both sides. And no, there, there weren't were. good people on both sides. Do you consider the, the Nazis, Nazis? Do you consider the Nazis good people? They weren't uh, the they, Who were the faction. people? Who was the... Who you was, can't, wait you a minute. Can't who be, was the main we, faction against tearing down those statues? Who was it, uh, Phil? Southern. Uh, Who rallied people Southerners. together to come to Charlottesville to demonstrate? It was the American Nazi Party. They were there too. No, they weren't there too. They represented the other side. Well, you know, there's there's a part to revisionist history. This isn't that, revisionist history, Phil. Well, there there were a number of people there that weren't Nazis. And and yes, and, and, and they were marching. Still- they were marching against the statues. Don't you understand, no. Phil? That the major people there that were demonstrating against they were against the demonstrators who wanted to take the statues down were all basically Nazi sympathizers. The the news has a good way. No, of forget about what uh, you uh, see. Phil. You can excuse as much as you want to with all this fake news bullshit. But I'm sorry it doesn't wash in that you're, case because we have video of that. Yeah, you have video of, of, of a picture of a street with a bunch of people with, with candles or whatever the hell it was, tiki torches. Uh, yeah, where do they, and, where do they and, go and they for were, their demonstrations? Home Depot? What is that with the tiki <laughs> torches? Yeah, well, it was a sale at Walmart. And, uh, you know, I, I really think that there's, there was more to the equation and that there is they there are news media try to make an equivalency oh, quit of blaming, Nazi quit blaming and, the news media Phil. Stop and the supporters. It well, they're the ones that pick the stories that they show. If if you can you can, it, it isn't fake news, but what it is is it's it's selective news. So if you select stories that that so go over to Fox, agenda, go over to Fox. They select their news. Okay. Of, well, hey, I, I understand. You know, I can't believe anything. Listen, you know? and listen. If you listen to me any amount of time on this show, I even said it last night, is that uh, I'm not happy with uh, with uh, uh, MSNBC. MSNBC. I think that they're. You know, I'm getting tired of the same old story every day. You know, I got to tell people. Trump isn't the only story, okay? There's a lot happening in this world. And unfortunately, the, the, the news people aren't covering it. That's the problem. Right. Uh, you but know? They, they cover what they select to cover. And so they can, they can shape the story. Well, he, you know, I think, you're, I think you're, you're judging why they do that. And I'm going to tell you the reason why they do it that you don't say. The reason they do it is they're looking to make a buck from advertising, and they want to get as many they want to get as many eyeballs watching their news network as possible at any given moment, so they can sell that advertising for a nice high price. And that's what's driving how they run the stories. If they felt that other stories would get them numbers, they would be doing those other stories. Okay. But when you call yourself a news operation, you should feel that you're serving the people and trying to inform them of what's going on in the world. And there are a lot of stories in this world that are just not being covered. Well, you know, when you're on the freeway and you're driving and then somebody has an accident, even though there are plenty of lanes to get around, everybody slows down to look at the gore on the side of the road. And that's what 
we're being fed by the different news agencies, whether it's Fox or MSNBC. They're all guilty of not their opinion agencies. They're uh, using using news events rather than actually reporting the news. Actually, and, I find, I, you know, I was been watching CNN the last couple of days, and I'm much happier with CNN than I am with MSNBC. That's I, not hard. I, I think they're far more even-handed. You know, they try not to be biased, but when you've got the president... Here, here I want to find out how you feel about this. The other day, the president suggested that we all boycott AT&T because they own CNN. I didn't hear that. It, well, he did. Take no, it from me. Did. Am, am I right, Charlie? He said it, right? Yeah, yeah. he said it. He said, boycott CNN, uh, uh, AT&T. Well, first of all, I don't know if we can boycott AT&T because in most cases we've got a two-year uh, obligation yeah. to them. Yeah. That's for starters. Secondly... Oh, are you really trying to intimidate a organization like AT&T by getting people to boycott them because you don't like the way you're being reported? There's something very wrong with that. Well, yes, uh, I, I agree that uh, you shouldn't try to influence uh, the news or the reporting uh, no, but you also shouldn't boycott, you shouldn't boycott the person that owns it. I'll tell you why you should boycott uh, AT&T. They mm. bought up a lot more than CNN. You know, they bought up uh, one of my favorite places right now to go, which is the DC channel. Uh, and they have a thing on the, uh, of the um, uh, Swamp Thing. Uh, Swamp Thing had one episode out so far, and they've canceled it. Why? Because AT&T probably didn't want them to renew it because they have other ideas of what they want to do with that, that particular... Isn't that the way it works in that business? Well, I, 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 you know, you're going to see this happening a lot. You've got to realize what is going to happen to CNN. Consolidation. What's, go, what's going to happen to Turner Classic Movies as yeah. a result of the AT&T merger? You know? Well, whenever you have consolidation in, in an industry... Uh, you start homogenizing uh, all the content. So, for instance, even in my industry, uh, carpet, uh, there used to be 300 mills. Now there's about five, and there's only three major ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all make the same thing. Uh, and, and if they have different brands, yeah. the brands are all the same thing with different names. And so the same thing, and because my industry suffered a lot of consolidation, so I think the same thing's happening in in uh, the you know in the content in the industry. Well, it, but, 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 but what's sad about it is, that for instance, like uh, Turner Classic Movies, I love it. It's just the best. It's been non-commercial for years. They make their money by selling their service to the cable companies per subscriber, and. Uh, uh, and, and also selling little books and, you know, they're, they're like a little cottage industry. And they've really, they, they, they take care of themselves, you know. Uh, they don't have to pay for the, uh, the films they show because they're owned by, they own them. Uh, Alex? Yeah. Uh, the, the cable industry, as, as we've known it, is changing. And, and it may not even exist in a few more years. What, what's uh, it going to be replaced by, Phil? Streaming. Uh, what do you think content? it's going to be streamed on, Phil? Well, uh, you know, there's the cable, and then there's cable networks. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, Phil. Phil, all your internet providing is done by the cable companies, and so if right. you've got, uh, I've got FiOS here, and my, uh, if I go online, I'm using my uh, my high speed internet which is provided by essentially the cable company. So they're I not going wait. away. They may go away in providing the individual services content. like content. But right, that's but, what I'm saying. But then again, look who's buying up the content. I understand, and it's called consolidation. But what you see, the, the cable that we know today, you know, you go to infinity and you press the button and you turn the channels, that's going to go away. Yeah, but I, I, I can make it go away, but I still have my Ethernet, which is being supplied by them. 
It's two different things. Uh, no, you know, no, no, it's not two different things because then what I'll do is I will go to these various places and get my TV and pick right. and choose That's it, the way it's which going is going to wind up, oddly enough, costing me more than it's costing but, now but when it's bundled. That's the way it's going to be. You're not going to have the Infinity or wh whatever the other brands are, AT&T. They all have uh, the hey, content. Hey, Fios will be around 20 years from now. I'm it, not talking about the pipe that brings well, in the but that's But that's everything. The pipe is everything. What that pipe sells you are entirely different. And what right. they'll also do is if all of a sudden they're not making as much money off the cable services... Well, hell, they'll just charge you more for the internet. What I understand, but what, aren't they saying that people are cutting the cord? Now they're not cutting the cord of the pipe that comes no, in. No, they, uh, they think they're cutting the cord. What they're doing is they're simply saying, "Well, I don't want those services provided to me. I'll get them on my own." But I still right. need the internet, so keep that internet coming to me right. through the pipe. But it's not coming. You see, you had said it's that coming the, through the, the, the cable. Turner. It's coming through the cable. Yeah, I know, but you said, look, the Turner movies were coming in and were paid for commercial-free because they were being paid for by the cable subscriber. Now, what I'm saying is, is that the cable subscriber for those kinds of services are going away and eventually will have, uh, will completely so, so, uh, be so, diminished. So, uh, uh, TCM, so TCM will they, start charging subscriptions. Right. They need a new revenue stream. Well, they, you know, they're already... They already have, a, you haven't gone there, but TCM has a very lovely app that goes on both Roku and, you know, whatever. Right. And by you the way, by the way, I want to just take time to mention that uh, if you haven't uh, tried it already, uh, Alex Bennett's Ramble is on a new outlet as of uh, a few days ago. Uh, we are on iHeartRadio. Uh, you go to iHeartRadio.com iHeartRadio.com, and we are uh, uh, being, uh, our shows are, our podcasts are being served by iHeartRadio. So yours aren't on the Clear Channel? There is no Clear Channel. iHeartRadio used to be Clear Channel. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's really, it's really. You got to go to Clear Channel to hear yeah. your show. But anyway, so if, if you go to uh, um, uh iHeartRadio.com and go to their podcast section. Put in Alex Bennett's Ramble. There we are. You know, there are a few shows there that don't work because I don't know how those shows are being served to them. But do you have to subscribe to iHeartRadio? Is that how that works? No, you can do it without subscribing. Oh, but not a paid subscription. It, but if you if you subscribe to it, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh -huh. Well, there's the theme. There's the theme, and we managed uh, to talk very maybe. little about. I'll Donald see you Trump's next show. week. Maybe. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're uh, you're gone tomorrow. Okay, so that means uh, Scott, you can call and, here today, and, and Tom, you tomorrow. can call, and everybody else, you can call. It's called the Get a Word in Edgewise Friday Show. Of uh, hey, I did, Jeff. I, I was pretty good. You tonight. were very good tonight. You were very yes. good. I think everybody will agree, right, Jeff? Yep. Uh, I agree. And, and right, Charlie. Yep. And right, uh, Kevin. Yep, go eat your meat. Yeah, go, eat, <laughs> go eat your meat. That's what I'm going to do. As long yeah. as I don't yeah. eat my meat. Eat your meat, right. Uh, <laughs> Not um, eat it. Hey, everybody, if you wave goodbye, I'll wave goodbye back. There weren't a lot of you, but boy, it was a good little show. So see you later. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizens panel. Let me hang up on them. Uh, and let me get out of this. Uh, make myself invisible. Kill the Skype. And uh, that's it. Okay, that's all she wrote. Uh, we're back on um, tomorrow night. Uh, next is a very good show. It's Jack Bishop and the Intersection. And then it will be uh, followed by absolutely nothing but 24 hours of just all our shows being repeated over and over again ad nauseum. And uh, then, uh, you know, if you want to listen to my show at any time, you can always go over to iHeartRadio and do that. Uh, and uh, or you can go to Spotify. There are a lot of other places you can do it. In the meantime, I'll be back again tomorrow night after Damian Chaplin and the Exchange at 9:30 at 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>